Now open your question paper and look at part one. You'll hear four different extracts. For questions one to eight, choose the answer, A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. There are two questions for each extract. Extract one. So, um, how do you get the fish in the first place? Do you buy them or breed them here? No, I don't rely on anyone else. I'm thankfully self-sufficient in juveniles, the young ones, because I breed my own fish here, as this enables me to give full details of the fish's origins to customers. They expect that. Which part of the whole process do you enjoy most? Really, product development is my baby, and one has to put one's mind to that continuously. It's crucial. The marketing skill that you've developed here with your fish, would that be transferable to beef, sheep? Well, I think it's a mindset, isn't it? To my mind, producing fish is fantastic. It's a great satisfaction to do it properly. But, you know, what's the point of producing a wonderful fish if you haven't got a profitable sale at the end of the day? I think it comes down to providing a top-quality service for your clients. And I must say, that's really what I enjoy. That's what keeps me here. So, um, how do you get the fish in the first place? Do you buy them or breed them here? No, I don't rely on anyone else. I'm thankfully self-sufficient in juveniles, the young ones, because I breed my own fish here, as this enables me to give full details of the fish's origins to customers. They expect that. Which part of the whole process do you enjoy most? Really, product development is my baby, and one has to put one's mind to that continuously. It's crucial. The marketing skill that you've developed here with your fish, would that be transferable to beef, sheep? Well, I think it's a mindset, isn't it? To my mind, producing fish is fantastic. It's a great satisfaction to do it properly. But, you know, what's the point of producing a wonderful fish if you haven't got a profitable sale at the end of the day? I think it comes down to providing a top-quality service for your clients. And I must say, that's really what I enjoy. That's what keeps me here. Extract 2 So did you feel when you started publishing that women were treated differently from men? By critics, for example. It never crossed my mind. So confident was I that I could do it. I think if you start counting the low numbers of reviews and contributors to literary journals, you too get a rather dismal answer. But that didn't worry me. And I think one of the reasons was that writing novels is, for a woman, the best choice to make. There was a long tradition behind you. Had I chosen other forms of literary endeavour, like drama, which I did have a go at and failed, it would have been very different. There was a huge gap in England between Afra Ben, the infamous woman playwright of the 16th century, and the next really successful woman dramatist, Carol Churchill, in the 1960s. I was very conscious in drama of not exactly an establishment, but all sorts of things I couldn't cope with or got frustrated by. The novel was uniquely the sphere in which you felt you had equal billing. So did you feel when you started publishing that women were treated differently from men? By critics, for example. It never crossed my mind. So confident was I that I could do it. I think if you start counting the low numbers of reviews and contributors to literary journals, you too get a rather dismal answer. But that didn't worry me. And I think one of the reasons was that writing novels is, for a woman, the best choice to make. There was a long tradition behind you. Had I chosen other forms of literary endeavour, like drama, which I did have a go at and failed, it would have been very different. There was a huge gap in England between Afra Ben, the infamous woman playwright of the 16th century, and the next really successful woman dramatist, Carol Churchill, in the 1960s. I was very conscious in drama of not exactly an establishment, but all sorts of things I couldn't cope with or got frustrated by. 
the novel was uniquely the sphere in which you felt you had equal billing. Extract 3 I haven't read the Inspector Rebus books myself. What's he like? Well, he's kind of concerned about his place within the world. He's quite... He's a thinker? Yeah, in the way that we all are. We think, what on earth's going on? How can this happen? Am I part of the problem or in some way part of the solution? What am I doing to change that? Mm. And in a very sort of introspective way, I think he tries to resolve his own life issues by dealing with them externally. He's a bit of an independent thinker, an eccentric, then. Well, yes, but that's probably because, as an individual, he's concerned with what is happening to him and to the world. And I think being a cop is often, in some sense, a kind of, a kind of pursuit, theoretical or psychological, trying to understand the world that he lives in, through trying to understand the events that happen around him. So he's anti the authorities in general, certainly, but I think he's probably just more aware of his personal responsibility for his own existence than, than simply eccentric. I haven't read the Inspector Rebus books myself. What's he like? Well, he's kind of concerned about his place within the world. He's quite... He's a thinker? Yeah, in the way that we all are. We think, what on earth's going on? How can this happen? Am I part of the problem or in some way part of the solution? What am I doing to change that? Mm. And in a very sort of introspective way, I think he tries to resolve his own life issues by dealing with them externally. He's a bit of an independent thinker, an eccentric, then. Well, yes, but that's probably because, as an individual, he's concerned with what is happening to him and to the world. And I think being a cop is often, in some sense, a kind of, a kind of pursuit, theoretical or psychological, trying to understand the world that he lives in through trying to understand the events that happen around him. So he's anti the authorities in general, certainly, but I think he's probably just more aware of his personal responsibility for his own existence than, than simply eccentric. Extract 4 What's strange about pop music is that it usually has a clear function. The function of the music of the 1940s and 50s was to soothe and to bring romance back into life. In the 60s, the function was simply to help young people to make the transition from adolescence to adulthood. That was all it was about. It provided a self-contained therapy which had never been necessary before. This rite of passage had always been eased by society, by the military system, by the academic, by the post-industrial revolution machinery. By the end of the 50s, the young had shaken themselves free of all that. They had to look after themselves, and the popular culture reflected that. We forget that before the 1960s, young people generally aspired to be like their parents in styles of dress, work, even leisure. Then, suddenly, the rebellious, independent teenager was born. <laughs> it was a totally new concept, which initially shook the older generation to the core as youth took over and revolutionised fashion, lifestyle, travel and, of course, morals. What's strange about pop music is that it usually has a clear function. The function of the music of the 1940s and 50s was to soothe and to bring romance back into life. In the 60s, the function was simply to help young people to make the transition from adolescence to adulthood. That was all it was about. It provided a self-contained therapy which had never been necessary before. This rite of passage had always been eased by society, by the military system, by the academic, by the post-industrial revolution machinery. By the end of the 50s, the young had shaken themselves free of all that. They had to look after themselves, and the popular culture reflected that.
We forget that before the 1960s, young people generally aspired to be like their parents in styles of dress, work, even leisure. Then suddenly, the rebellious independent teenager was born. <laughs> it was a totally new concept, which initially shook the older generation to the core as youth took over and revolutionised fashion, lifestyle, travel, and of course, morals. That's the end of part one.